Hello everybody and welcome to another podcast. Today I'm talking to two people um, behind the soundtrack and the sound design of the recent indie hit Crosscode, uh, respectively. Now, don't kill me if I mispronounce anything. Um, they're Dennis Akbulut, the composer, and Te Flora, or aka Flora, um, who was in charge of the sound design. Crosscode, of course, is a JRPG, action RPG game that recently came out. We did the interview, um, I think, two months ago. It, it was a crazy time, didn't get much time to edit at all. Uh, but now it's done and I really hope you enjoy it. I think it's a little bit of a different episode in so far that those two guys are part of the core team behind the game. So um, they really have insight into the development process and are very close to the whole um, development of the game and have been on board for years. So um, I think that is an interesting angle which I try to expand upon a little bit in the interview. And without further ado, here's the CrossCode audio team. So welcome guys, nice having you here and um, let's jump right in. How has the release gone so far? The game's been out for six weeks, are you guys happy with the reception? I am, <laughs> pretty much. Uh -huh. How about you, Dennis? It's been pretty alright, I think. Like, um, it's all pretty well as far as I've heard. Yes, and we got a lot of very positive feedback and... Uh, Especially for like first indie game, yeah, um, it's it's really really good. Yeah, absolutely. Have you made a big splash? Because the game's been in early access for quite some time, but uh, now that it, it fully released, there was a big uptick in sales and and press as well, right? Yes, definitely. And you guys even have have dedicated publishers for different countries, isn't that right? Uh, yes, it's true. Yeah. For the Asian countries. Okay, wow. You you don't hear that often in uh, indie games. It's usually like, you know, I have I made a Twitter account that's our publishing. Yeah, we got pretty lucky there. I, I don't really know how that actually like happened at the start. It just happened somehow. Other other team members probably know more about it. <laughs> okay. But it is cool that you guys you you are freelancers, right? But at the same time, you're uh, like a fixed part of the team. Um, you could say it like that, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We've been we've been like heavily involved with CrossCode ever since, like earliest since uh, we uh, managed to have an, a successful uh, Indiegogo campaign, mm -hmm. and that's when the first people like first people started to work more or less full time. I also like joined the more or less full time team uh, a year later or so. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Indiegogo, I think, was 2015? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. So you guys have been on board two or three years so far? Um, we've actually been longer than that on the team. It's just um, before that we basically used our free time to work on the game. Mm -hmm. Like everyone did. And uh, with the Indiegogo campaign, we got some money and we also got um, our publisher, Deck 13, mm -hmm. pretty soon after that. Oh, sweet. Um, so, yeah, we had the financial uh, possibility to just really work on it and get paid for it and stuff. Uh huh. Okay. So, uh, in total, how many, how many years has it been that you guys have started the project? I think it. Uh, when did you come on board before Indiegogo? Yeah, I think I think uh, the first tech demo was uh, in 2012 uh -huh. online. Wow. In web browser. And it didn't have any sounds. Uh, but a few months after that, we released the tech do demo plus plus. Mm -hmm. um, where we had the first um, first sound effects and I think the first music too. That was, uh, I think that was early, early 2013. Okay, five years ago, more than five. This is already late 2018. Because usually the, the people I talk to, they come on board quite late and they just compose a soundtrack or make sound design for a few weeks or months and then they're gone again. Um, how do you think the process, like being on there for five years, changed the outcome? 
And did you iterate over the game a lot? Did you change a lot through, throughout the years on the music and sounds that you uh, made in early stages? Well, um, since because we worked so long in the game, you can tell when um, um, certain sounds or music uh, were made very early in development and very late in development because naturally mm -hmm. you get better at doing this. So, um, I mean, uh, we've the way the whole development worked is um, since we had a um, early access version. And it, it had updates every now and then. Like we we, we would uh, promise our uh, backers and early access people like more content over time. Yeah, frequent and, updates. Yeah, frequent updates. And we would also naturally need uh, music and sounds. So uh, as soon as there's like a new part in the game that needs music or sounds, we, we are being uh, called in and we have to do our work too. Mm -hmm. So it's like a um, returning process. And before before the full release, did you go back to old tracks and revamp them? Oh, there wasn't any time to revamp stuff. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, you had to to redo some stuff, right? Like oh yeah, right. Uh, for the music, uh, I had to do some uh, like uh, remake some some old tracks because way back in 2013, I was working on a different computer and um, I didn't know any better, and I kind of messed up when when making backups. Oh. So uh, it was it was mostly because um, if I were to put all the music tracks in the game, there should also be like um, in high in the highest possible quality in the soundtrack as well. Yeah. So, uh, but all, the only thing I had left of the uh, old tracks were the highly compressed uh, Orc Vorbis files that <laughs> are in the game. Oh wow! So it would have been uh, I, I had to uh, bite the bullet and uh, redo them. <laughs> yeah. And that, that very, very, very close to release as well. It was, it was very stressful. Mm. Oh man! There was, the, I had so much to do. Like the, the the last two months at least have been incredibly stressful. Mm. There was so much work to be left to be done. Mm -hmm. I had to make uh, so much new music because all these, all these last bits of the game, um, they came together at the very last, uh, very in the very last days. So I had to wait until it's ready and then. Had uh, had to do like a five minute piece for the boss battle, <laughs> and uh, like in the very last week, um, I, I was still waiting on uh, to 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 know how long the credit sequence is going to be. So I had to make like music that is going to be um, long enough for it as well. Mm -hmm. So everything has been very chaotic and 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 mm -hmm. um, like a like a storm. Yeah, and on top of all that, I mean, uh, from what I've heard, the 1.0 release was like half the content of the whole game, right? It was a huge uh, addition in terms of the content. Yeah, we, we worked on um, the latter bit of the game in secret mm -hmm. because it contains lots of spoilers. And um, we were, of course, very anxious to see how people will um, like re receive that um, mm -hmm. Because um, the the early access version actually um, like uh, you, you can play uh, the first half of the story, mm -hmm. but once you reach a certain point where it actually gets really interesting in the story, the game the game ends and um, uh, the, the the part after has been the part we've we've worked on for so long now, and um, uh, it's 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 great to be able to able to show like to 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 show everything um, we've worked uh, in secret because yeah. a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff uh, in, in in the latter half uh, is, is stuff we're really proud of. Mm -hmm. Just in general, uh, you could say uh, that the content over time of our development and so uh, over time in the game too got uh, better and better in quality. I would say. Mm -hmm. Like we we learned a lot of stuff on the way, and um, I think uh, everything from story and uh, uh, graphics and environment and sound and music gets better and better. <laughs> it's it's funny. So you actually build the game chronologically. You build the first level first and the last level last, more or less. Kinda. Um, the, uh, in there's a middle point in the story that uh, we did pretty uh, pretty much pretty late in the development because mm -hmm. um, 
we first wanted uh, to finish the 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 open dungeons and the open areas for um for testing for our early access users mm -hmm. and um so we waited to um make the the other area that's important um mm -hmm. until after that so and that's that's actually pretty good so you have a middle point where you get get there and everything is really polished and and very uh, really oh. nice <laughs> Very high quality, I would say. Yeah, and you get uh, get sort of a glimpse of what it's gonna be like towards the end mm -hmm. in terms yes. of polish. Okay, I see. I, I think I think it was like this. Uh, we started making the um, all the levels, all the maps uh, chronologically. Like all the dungeons you you can um, find in the latter half of the, of the game are actually uh, were actually already done um, during the early access version. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, all the maps and, and areas and stuff, they were all done chronologically, actually. And uh, then we added all the uh, narrative. And those were done chron chronologically as well. Mm -hmm. Like we, um, narrative as in we um, put like cutscenes between them, had like lots of dialogues written, make it, make it a, a, a story-driven game. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, instead of, of, of uh, like, uh, oh, here, here's some dungeons you can explore. Mm -hmm. Instead of a open world single player MMO. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and that, now that you guys say it, um, have you put on other hats because you're in such a, a small development studio? Have you guys done like level design or writing or at some point, or did you just stick to audio? Well, um, mostly we did um, music and audio, but um, we often have um, conferences like mm -hmm. every one or two weeks and we basically brainstorm ideas what to do next for like when, when we are when we're ready to make a new boss we um ask everyone to like throw in some ideas wacky ideas crazy ideas and we just we just uh collect ideas like that and uh pick the one we, we like the most and that's that's how a lot of uh, cool ideas get get it into the game like um one of the bosses is like a I think I think at, at some point I jokingly said, "What if what if at the top of this tree of this giant tree there's like a a whale, a, a big freaking whale <laughs> that's uh, using the the leaves on the ground as like sort of water and jumps out at you and stuff like that." And <laughs> Felix the Madman actually <laughs> did it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, that's really cool. That's a, a kind of creative control that you don't usually have. That's a that's a dream. I think. So back back to the music and sound design. Um, did you coordinate a lot among yourselves? Um, for example, like did you cover up transitions in the music with certain sound design, or in at the very general level, did you like uh, coordinate how to nail the aesthetic? Did you use similar synths to to create uh, sounds, or how did you guys work together? <laughs> I think it was mostly just uh, Felix directing us. We barely. Mm -hmm. Co like we barely mm -hmm. collaborated with each other mm -hmm. like uh, me and mm -hmm. me and Felix um, uh, 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 Flo I mean interesting but it works really well <laughs> yeah I mean I got um, uh, pretty early on I got an um, idea through the music um, um, what kind of like flair the, uh, uh, the, the game have because it's sci-fi but it's it's uh, very positive fantasy sci-fi i would mm -hmm. say so it's not uh of course da no dark and gritty sounds would fit there yeah and i like to use a lot of uh like crystal or glass sounds for uh for sci-fi effects and mm -hmm. um they're a bit inspired by some of the instruments uh Intero also uses so Oh, it's a bit there, but it's not uh, like directly. Oh, yeah, which which uh, instrument did you use? Uh, can you give me some samples or stuff? Uh, not like that. Mm -hmm. But it, you you kind of got inspired by the overall aesthetic and and feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can. Yeah, even the combat tracks are kind of cheery. I noticed that. It's it's like positive and upbeat, even though I'm like slaying uh, rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Um, 
Okay, so but you, I'm sure you got common ground um, in terms of the the original inspirations as well. Like um, I don't know, consoles era. Uh, what's what is the aesthetic of Crosscode? Is it is it uh, Super Nintendo? Um, um, I could say. I think it just has a lot of influences, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of different influences uh, in terms of like graphic or story or gameplay or. Um, I don't know. But but it's not a, a particular console that it's emulating in terms of its graphics, for example. I think uh, everyone in the team had a different experience with consoles, and um, we melted that together, kind of. Mm -hmm. I actually haven't played uh, the old uh, Super Nintendo classics like Secret of Mana or Chrono Trigger or stuff. I know them, and I, mm -hmm. I know where the inspiration, like, comes from but i haven't played them <laughs> i uh, i took a lot of inspiration for the sound effects uh, from zelda for example because i i love the zelda games like the uh, the old zelda ones um, like link to the past i mean more like the 3d games actually uh -huh. so of starting with um Wind Wake. ocarina of time mm -hmm. uh -huh. i think uh, speaking of inspirations i think it's also um should we know that um, Felix is, uh, I think Felix himself is more inspired by Super Nintendo games. Mm -hmm. And he's also, like in his 30s, I'm, I'm, I'm probably one of the younger uh, team members that grew up with the P PlayStation 1. So mm -hmm. to me, to me uh, my music is more inspired of PlayStation 1 and early PlayStation 2 games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I so. never had a PlayStation, so <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I had a PlayStation 1 and 2, but that's also my kind of era. The first one I had was a Nintendo 64. No, the very first one was Game Boy Classic, actually. Mm. Um, so did, are there any particular games, Dennis, that you uh, would draw, that you would name in terms of inspiration? Oh, there's, there's tons of inspirations. Like, um, I would uh, often listen to music from Clonoa, Kirby, Fantasy, Fantasy Star Online, Falcom Games, uh, got to look into my iTunes very quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I do listen to lots of Nintendo stuff, so, um, but I, I barely listen to RPG music, actually. Mm. So maybe, maybe you, you won't get this kind of typical JRPG kind of sound with, with CrossCode. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to point out one game that inspired me a lot in terms of sound design, and that is Overwatch. Mm -hmm. I, Overwatch. I fucking love the sound design of Overwatch, and, uh -huh. uh, especially an element later on called the wave element. Uh, we mm -hmm. decided pretty early on on the on the element, and I think it was 2013, and uh, dubstep <laughs> was very in, and uh, the thought of uh, having a dubstep element was very funny to us. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, then came um, Overwatch with the hero Lucio, and it's mm -hmm. pretty much exactly the sound I wanted to have. Lucio, is that the guy on rollerblades? Yes, yes, oh, yeah. he has a sound gun, a sound wave gun. Oh, like... yeah, yeah, he can blast you off the cliff and such. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah I it, remember. It's, it's, uh, the sound he has is not the aggressive dubstep sound. It's not like... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's more like... <laughs> right, right. Sounds. Uh, so it's, it's very... Um, um, uh, nice to, to listen to. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, I and that became. Um, I'm. I'm actually. I, I. I pulled up my second screen and I'm looking at the wave temple uh, of Crosscode right now. That became one of the Crosscode sound effects as well. This. This subs. Uh, how. How did the dubstep aesthetic uh, end up in Crosscode? Um, it's uh, used for. Um, wave is kind of an, a natural energy, you could mm -hmm. say. Uh, so you have uh, things like uh, teleporters, or um, you can shoot balls through the walls. Oh yeah! And mm -hmm. um, just when you throw them, they make um, additionally to the to the hit sounds, they make a whoop sound. Mm -hmm. 
and um, it's just layered on top of it. Oh, cool. Uh huh. I'm I'm surprised. I would have thought that you guys uh, would come up with with more with older games in terms of the inspiration. Um, but that's that's really cool that you guys uh, you're a bit <laughs> younger than Felix, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, Dennis, did you did you find some uh, some more in your iTunes library? Um, there, as, um, I listened to a lot of uh, Rockman EXE transmission and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon while I made the soundtrack. I also listened to a lot of um, Final Fantasy Nine. No, no, oh. uh, eleven. Eleven. Final Fantasy, uh -huh. the, the MMO. Okay. That one has really good music. I didn't play it. I played nine and ten a lot, but not eleven. I never played 11 as well, but I uh, listen to the music often. <laughs> oh yeah, I got that with some games as well. I see. So, but if you're not really trying to emulate a certain era or console, then you didn't, um, you didn't really impose any technical restrictions on yourself when making uh, the music or sound effects, did you? No. Oh, um, I no. kind of did. You did? Like, um, I... Went out on my way and got myself a sound module, like a hardware sound module, mm -hmm. um, like way back uh, in the PlayStation era, in the PlayStation 2 era even, they used, um, instead of virtual instruments, you had um, rack synthesizers mm -hmm. and um, you, uh, these, these like um, contained all the sounds you would use. Oh. And these, these types of sounds are, you, you cannot find them as, um, as virtual instruments, mm -hmm. well, most of them you, you, you won't. So um, I got myself like an, a, a, a Roland Integra Seven, which has all the, like it's it's a late module actually, but it contains uh, lots of sounds that were um, inside modules that were popular during the '90s and early 2000s, like a, J, a JV 1080 and a XV. 5080. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I saw that you tweeted about that the other day, that you might not be able to to take it with you to Japan or something. Oh yeah, um, if I were to move to Japan, I probably have to sell my Integra 7 because um, even though it's a, like a, it's, it's, it's an expensive and late module, they didn't really make it compatible with um, uh, like, it's, 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 like the, the, the power supply isn't um, 50 hertz and 60 hertz com compatible. Oh, it's, okay. That's a shame. It's kind of a bummer. Mm, that sucks. Yeah. But that's how you uh, sort of got the aesthetic nailed down by using just sounds from this machine? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, um, a lot of these sounds that, that are on this module are, were also being used in all the games, and that definitely helped. Um, like um, establish that, that sort of old, old school aesthetic. Mm. Very cool. How about you, Flora? Did you um, like use certain, certain hardware? Uh, no, no, I use uh, just my microphone and my computer and FL Studio. Uh, oh, so, so it wasn't even a synthesis? It was mo like, did you do Foley work? I, I uh, combine a lot of Foley work with uh, synthesis. Okay. That's basically my, my go-to uh, design process because um, the, the synth gives me a lot of control uh, about the, uh, the core of the sound, I would say. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Foley gives me an or or organic sound oh. and makes it more, more natural, basically. And I put that on, on top of each other, basically. And... Um, often many, many, many layers on top of each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> because you can always make it more interesting, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't... The only um, like um, thing I have to think about is making the sound mono. Mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of the development, I didn't know that. Uh, I I used to make uh, stereo sounds, and stereo sounds are a lot of fun to design because mm -hmm. you can create unique experiences to listen to. But um, if you position sounds in the game um, with positional sounds, it uh, it messes everything up. Oh, okay. So for certain sound effects, I have to um, restrain myself to mono. Mm -hmm. 
like um, footsteps or waterfall sounds or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's basically the only restriction I I have, and I like to work freely around. And for the recorded sounds, did you? Um... How did you get them to sound lo-fi? Did you like crush them in, in some way to get them fit the aesthetic? Uh, I haven't used lo-fi a lot. Okay. Um, there's maybe a few sounds, um, like the teleportation sound is one of the first sounds uh, in the game. Mm -hmm. But I I used um, it's it's made up of uh, a lot of little bits and chips. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a symbol sound stretched very long with a specific algorithm that uh, adds a lot of um, what's the it called? artifacts. Artifacts, yes, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. But yeah, I I didn't like uh, want to use Bit Crusher or something to mm -hmm. um, to reduce the. Like fidelity. quality of the, or mm -hmm. fidelity of the sound, yes, just to to fit an aesthetic because um, I think uh, crosscode is like a mixture of of a lot of things, and mm -hmm. it's like uh, with the graphics too. We of course we use a palette and and have pixel art graphics, but we don't restrain ourselves to certain colors or something. Mm -hmm. We use the full color spectrum. We use as many colors as we as we need to, and in um, the same vein, there's some naturalistic sound design in there. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, if you say you you didn't really uh, you did use synthesis, did you just use uh, software synths? Mm -hmm. Just um, a lot of the the basic plugins of FL Studio. I just use. They're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, that's what I always like to say. It's, you know, you got to be able to use the things you got. Um, I, I make a lot of music with some of the pre-built um, uh, synthesizers that just come out of the box with Cubase. <laughs> and they sound, mm -hmm. they sound really nice. You don't need something really expensive. Yeah, especially if you just know what you're doing, what you want to achieve. Um, Exactly. So, but you already touched on it. Um, there's some restrictions that come with the territory, which was really fascinating. Is the game is made in, in HTML5. It can actually run in browsers. So, did that limit you guys in terms of the implementation? Did uh, or was it no problem? I, I imagine um, it's got it's got some limited functionalities compared to like Unity or other uh, uh, software. So one thing um, Felix was always afraid of is uh, using too many sounds or rather loading too many sounds mm -hmm. um, because it could just overload the memory or, or something. So I often had the idea to just add sounds to everything and mm -hmm. every, every action an enemy has and stuff. And... He said, ah, try to make more generic sounds that we can reuse mm -hmm. in different ways or combine in different ways uh, so we don't have to load too many sounds. Wasn't there even a problem with that when you release 1.0? I, I remember there being some bug or something that, uh, that caused it, the game to crash because of uh, this kind of memory overload or something. Uh, yeah, that was uh, about... But that was not uh, like our fault or something. That's the the um, underlying engine we use, the uh, Node WebKit. Oh. Mm -hmm. And it was about loading loading the music. I think um, Intero used some kind of export. I don't know. You can tell me about it. I'm not quite sure what uh, what crash you're referring to. There was this one point where. Um, um the game would have trouble loading some new, uh, new music files because I uh, exported, them, exported them into Arc Vorbis from a different, um, from a different program. Like I used to use Audacity and at some point I bought WaveLab and did the same thing there. Mm -hmm. But um, as it turns out, the way uh, WaveLab does Arc Vorbis doesn't, um, doesn't work well with, uh, with our game. Uh, generally speaking, our game, like um, HTML5, 
audio out of the box is um, it's not very good in, uh, in our experience. Like um, we don't have we we don't have many cool options like other games from Unity do have. At the time, I don't think we had the option to even use something like FMOD or Wise. But um, now it looks different, I think. Like I've seen uh, there is now um, HTML5 support for, uh, from FMOD. But, or, maybe, or maybe I didn't, we didn't see that at the time. Like when we, when, when we implement sounds or music, we have to use um, a JavaScript text file and um, have to like write the references in, in, into the file and give it like a volume and, uh, volume and the volume is represented by a decimal number. So if you have over a thousand sounds and uh, stuff is like sounding unbalanced, you have to open up the JavaScript file and look for that one sound and yeah. uh, adjust the decimal number. And I kind of I kind of wish we had like something like FMOC back then, like early early implemented, so we didn't have the the, the problem to balance out uh, sounds. Yeah, I, I understand. And but you don't need a middleware to have um, certain things. That, that like, did you, for instance, adapt the music? Is it layered or things like that, or is it just tracks that loop? Um, well, uh, we didn't have any uh, option to have fancy layered music. I think the only layer that happens is um, a lot of the music is like. Um, Split into multiple parts, like there's an intro part that has also a reverb reverb tail at the at the end, and uh, a main part that also has a reverb tail at the end. So I tell the uh, I, I write into the JavaScript file uh, how long the actual track is, like minus the reverb tail. So it layers those sounds um, perfectly, but it's it doesn't always work. It's 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 actually pretty dodgy, like. Um, uh, like I said, the uh, HTML5 audio out of the box isn't very good. Uh, but so you guys actually do the implementation yourselves? Um, yeah, for the most part, um, I do. I do write my music. I implement music into a JavaScript file that um, that makes it uh, able to uh, use it in the level editor. But uh, putting the music into the level, uh, it's, that's usually something our level designer does, or Felix himself. Ah, okay. So you just get it into the project yourselves. Yeah, basically. For me, I um, implement a lot of the sounds myself. Like we have, we have the editor for it, and I can just uh, go to to certain effects or enemy actions and add sound effects and test them and change pitch or length or something. So do you, if you implement your audio yourself, that's actually great because I, when I do sound design, I have to like bug coders the whole time and say like, ah, this is still a little bit ahead of the animation mm -hmm. or a little bit behind. Um, but do you work off animations in general? When you make a sound, you isolate the animation, you make the sound and you, then you pull it in or do you tweak, can you even tweak it in engine? Uh, I do both. I, um... I mentioned earlier that um, Felix um, convinced me to do some more generic sounds. Um, and uh, it was just like, yeah, I, we need a charge up sound and uh, an energy sound or something like that. When I made those, um, actually very fun uh, to, to mess around and combine different sound effects to, to an attack. Um, so I do that on the fly on the editor, but sometimes I have a, a, spe a special animation I want a specific sound for, and I can just put it on another monitor and loop the sound, uh, loop the animation while I make uh, a sound in parallel. And so I can already like time it and um, uh, give it the right feel. Uh, while I make the sound. I often make the sound uh, with my mouth and in my mind a little bit, <laughs> so I can get a feel for it. Yeah. But sometimes it, I, I can stand, then still pitch it, pitch it up like 10% or speed it up like 10% or make it slower 10%. And that's something you would do inside of the game? Yes, sometimes, uh -huh. sometimes I do that. Oh, pretty cool. It saves, saves memory and, and work, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, nice. some uh, for some attacks and animations, uh, Felix 
mm. he used the generic sounds and made basically sounds by himself too. <laughs> uh, so that was really helpful too. Um, sometimes I went over them and made them a little bit better or uh, fine-tuned them, but it gave a good idea of what he wanted it to sound like. Mm -hmm. And cool. sometimes he had very creative ideas. He he took some sounds and slowed them down to like 30% and <laughs> it uh -huh. sounded pretty good and stuff. It's really cool. All right, that's that's a, a lot of t technical stuff. Um, let's let's get back to the more creative side of things. Um, mm. First, I got, I got a couple of questions here. Uh, first about the soundtrack and then about the sound effects. So Dennis, I, I was wondering, the, uh, what instrument do you play? Do you play an instrument or several? I do play the piano. Uh huh. Um, I had uh, keyboard and piano lessons when I was uh, younger. Mm -hmm. And um, I also have a stage piano here. I used to input my music. And uh, I, I was kind of confused about the, 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 the soundtrack was a separate release from the game. Just a side note. Um, how did how did Materia Collective come in? Are they publishing it or something? Materia Collective is basically um, taking care of uh, publishing it on all platforms like mm -hmm. um, iTunes, uh, Spotify, and um, they also take care of uh, mechanical licensing. Like if uh, someone were to uh, make a, a cover of, uh, of CrossCode and sell it, they have to like reach out to Materia Collective about it. Ah. Oh. Sweet. Like they, like they, they take care of lots of work for me, and I can, I, I don't, I don't have to worry anything about it. All right, and and you made a physical or a physical CD is being made by First Press Games. Right, uh, First Press Games uh, approached me to make a CD release, um, and the CDs are coming out uh, next week, even as far oh. as I know. Oh, it's, it's it's pretty exciting. Like I, I can't wait to have a, a have have a copy myself. It's, it's, um... so that's the second week of November, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, it's um, by the time the podcast is edited and online, it's probably in the past already. It's a, uh, several CDs, right? The soundtrack is super long. Uh, yeah, it's, it's two CDs. Uh, the soundtrack is uh, over two hours long. <laughs> wow. Well, you did have a couple of years to make it, but still, that's a lot of music. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Pretty excited about it. It's uh, it's very, it's uh, I'm very fortunate to have a CD release. Not 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 many people uh can say that uh, uh, about their debut project. Yeah, that's uh, I haven't had a CD release. Uh, that's really cool. Um, but uh, it's it's also it's also something that you don't often see. I think uh, in general, like some some lovers of of vinyl or something do that, but usually it's just digital download. Uh, interesting thing about the CDs, um, it's gonna be like a Japanese style uh, CD release. Like uh, it has uh, a spine card and a booklet, even. Oh, cool! Yeah, it looks pretty authentic. All right, <laughs> that's so cool. I got this straight now. I know. I okay. I now know who who does what. You got a lot of. You got like several publishers and a publisher for the soundtrack, and then you somebody else does the physical release. But now I understand. I think. Yeah. Um, in terms of all the music that you wrote, uh, I saw that it's like it's like fifty or something tracks, that, like of two minutes each. Um, so I wondered, where do all this? The, when does the music change? Is it is it a track per area and like a combat track for each area and like a theme for each character, or how did you go about it? Um, well, uh, every every area has its own theme. But uh, not every area has its own battle theme. Like um, we do have multiple battle themes, but they're not they're not divided into uh, two areas. More like into intensity, um, ah. mm -hmm. vibe, more likely. Um, not every character has its own theme as well. Like uh, I don't I don't think we even needed many uh, character themes um, because every cutscene would have like a certain certain vibe, mm -hmm. and I would I would make emphasize that vibe with, with uh, a cutscene track instead of making a character theme. That's how you reached over two hours of music, because you were always like, ah, this is some very specific mood I want to capture with this track, so I'm going to write a new one. I think, I think um, it's because of all the different battle themes and area themes that the um, soundtrack got so long. Okay. How many areas are there? Oof, um, I don't know. Many. 
okay. I haven't counted them actually. Well, if you count towns and areas together, let me let me calculate. I played a couple hours already, and I haven't been too mu much of the game. I think how many hours is the campaign? Ooh, um, forty. Okay, it's it's pretty it's pretty long. About? It can even play up to fifty hours, I think. Mm -hmm. It depends on a lot of your play style. Like uh, if you do every quest and uh, look at, at everything, you can get up to like eighty hours. But if you just focus on the story, it's about thirty hours. <laughs> okay. So 40, 40 to fifty is is a good middle ground. Uh huh. Yeah, in that case, I can see how more than two hours of music are are a good idea. But damn. <laughs> <laughs> And we talked a little bit about inspiration in terms of areas and consoles earlier, but I, I saw when I when I looked up your your soundtrack release just now, you you mentioned by name Eriko Imura and Samuel Asha Weiss. Who are those people? Oh, they are uh, people who helped me um, back when I was still going to uh, like uh, I I started making music uh, for Crosscode at the end of uh, 2012, and I was still going to school at the time. Uh huh. And uh, then I was going to university and um, working on CrossCode was like a side thing. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I didn't really feel like um, I was studying computer science, but wasn't very good at it. Mm -hmm. And I felt like um, I was going nowhere. Like I couldn't imagine myself doing this for a living. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I talked to um, I talked to many people, including Sam and Eriko, and um, I, I basically they basically encouraged me to do this for a living. Mm -hmm. and, um, both are people I, I look up to a lot and uh, they make fantastic music and um, they're, they're both a great, great inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it meant a lot uh, to me uh, uh, that, that they would uh, encourage me to, to do this for a living. And that's, that's when I, when I started, um, uh, like I dropped out from university basically, mm -hmm. and I worked on CrossCode full time and um that's been how long has been that ago like two years ago or something and it's it, it has worked out for me like i'm i'm very happy i, I did this uh, decision and um i am i'm very thankful to uh both sam and Eriko that uh, that they both encouraged me to, to do that awesome so did you guys just work on crosscode full time since like the last two or three years more or less, yeah. Like um, there's there's been a lot of work, in, especially in the last two years. Um, ever since we uh, started uh, working on the second second uh, part of it, because a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of like suddenly we have to do a lot more content. For me personally, there was like a um, in the middle of the game there was a um, part that needed a lot of music in in succession. Like there was lots of there's a new track, and after there's another track, and after there's another new track. And it's all like compressed into this like uh, twenty minute long uh, sequence, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, that 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 gave me a lot of work to do. And um, no, normally, I would also like work on a side thing or be like a bit more relaxed uh, about uh, whether, whether or not I'm gonna gonna work on um, a new thing on the side. But in the last one year at least, uh, CrossCode has been like the main focus for me. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to take a new freelance job now that CrossCode is, is over? Yes. Probably, um, yes. <laughs> okay. I am actually already uh, talking to a few people, and uh, I'm going to work on really cool games. I'm really excited. Anything you can talk about already? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I can't. Okay, okay. Um, I'm on another project called um, Star Chaser Story. Uh -huh. Sacred Earth. It's uh, from basically from a guy named Sizui, mm -hmm. or you may know his his character in a lot of games. Star Chaser story. Wait, don't tell me that's the oh, that's the one where you play the the guy and the girl, and they you can switch them up. Yes, exactly. I I met the guy actually at one of our uh, get-togethers. Oh, really? And a lot of his uh, characters were in other games because he, he did like big ass crowdfunding tiers for those games, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Oh, very cool. Yeah. He's, he's a big fan of CrossCode. His characters in, uh, will be in CrossCode too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was just asking me if I, I would like to help him out with 
uh, with sound design too. Mm -hmm. Awesome, cool. <laughs> Funny, I actually heard of that. Uh, isn't he American uh, Navy? Yes. Yeah, yeah. He was stationed in, in Germany for a while, so we got to meet at some point. Mm -hmm. Nice, awesome. Cool. Okay, so um, that, we're already talking about the future. Is there anything you can tell us about future plans for, for Radical Fish games? Probably not yet. Um, we have we have um, some plans for um, some more content for CrossCode. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have too many specifics out yet, but we have a lot of ideas, of course. And we mm -hmm. also have ideas for next game project. Um, but I think like over the next year or so, we're going to focus some more on cross code. So there's still so much to do on cross code. I thought it was, I was thought it was pretty much finished for now. Um, we still have uh, a lot of, uh, Becca content we need to get into the game. Oh, right. right. From the Indiegogo campaign. We asked them beforehand if it would be okay to, to, uh, add them post release. Mm -hmm. um, the majority said yes that's totally fine mm -hmm. yeah there's also still the story still needs some conclusions oh <laughs> at the end we will tell that story too and that concerns um music and sound design as well yes probably <laughs> all right very cool Oh, wait, I, I was going to ask, uh, because we actually didn't talk much about uh, the, the composition process. I was wondering, I, I, f I felt like the music has to get a lot of things right. It's very, it's got interesting rhythms, it's got catchy melodies, and it's got very complex harmonies, actually. Surprisingly complex stuff going on there. Um, True. Where did, where did that all come from? Is that sort of a thing that comes with the territory of, the, of this kind of game? I think it's just uh, the type of music I like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, um, I'm especially a fan of very jazzy uh, chord progressions, and I try my best to, uh, mm -hmm. like, do something interesting in that regard every time I make music. Mm -hmm. Did you have any formal training, any jazz lessons or something? No, I'm, I'm self-taught. Wow. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Wow, this is impressive. And, but it is kind of something that when you hear it, you do think of, of JRPGs a bit, right? Uh, this kind of jazzy, weird chord progression stuff. Like these kind of weird progressions are actually a staple in um, Japanese uh, video game music or J-pop. And um, mm -hmm. there, there's also uh, many good um, jazz bands uh, from Japan. Oh, really? Or more like I should say fusion. I'm I'm more like a fan of fusion actually, <laughs> which is which is like uh, we could say it's like uh, jazz rock. Mm -hmm. And I I try my best to like uh, get that sort of influence into my music, and I personally really like that that sort of uh, style. And also the, the the video games I listed as as um, as inspiration also go for that sort of uh, complex harmony uh, thing, for the most part I think. Um, can I ask like where? Where do you know the, the actual, all the chord progressions and, and stuff? How did you learn that? Um, I, I, did you just listen? <laughs> I, um, I often analyze music by kind of, um, reducing them to their chord progressions and, um, like, like, a, like a cheeky trick I do when I, when I try to play along a track is to transpose, uh, my keyboard so that I, um, I'm playing on, on C major. <laughs> so, so that's 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 how I can actually see the uh, like that's that's how I get to easily see the relations between each chord, functions wise, and mm. that, that kind of speeds up the process. Yeah. It's it's probably not very healthy, <laughs> so to say, to to always play in C major. But uh, that that was that was at, um, very early on. That was a very helpful um, boost to uh, making progress in that regard. Sure, I, I mean that's all you need. Uh... You're not required to be able to play it in like the, the, the weirdest uh, key. Um, but now that we're getting into the nuts and bolts of it, are you... So did you, did you extrapolate any, any rules? Are there special optional notes or special relations between chords that are very typical of the genre? Um, hmm, I haven't really thought much about it. Okay. 
<laughs> I mean, there That's are fine. of course some rules when I want to go back to, to, to tonic for a looping part. I often just go for um, a dominant. Like, I'm moving towards a dominant chord and um, <clears throat> try to see which version of it uh, will, will suit best. Stuff like that. Like, um, but that's very general, I think. But uh, I, I often, oh, yeah, right, right. I often use um, like seventh chords, nine chords, and uh, that often gets uh, this, this, this type of sound I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, there, there are many, many uh, cool things you can extend. Uh, chords and i try to get um as creative as as possible when when i'm trying out stuff there's of course lots of uh, experimentation involved yeah but um there's oft often also very uh basic chord progressions you can kind of tweak to your own liking until it sounds original enough to stand on its own by adding optional notes or by replacing some chords with some equivalents how do you spice it up yeah so to say like for example like there's um, what do you call them again? Um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm my my uh, <laughs> uh, music theory vocabulary is uh, kind of rusty. Okay. Uh, like like you can you can of course substitute certain chords with other chords. Like is it called tritone substitute? <laughs> yeah, that's what. Yeah. Like in J-pop, there's off there's there's many many um, classic uh, progressions like. Stuff like you you start on a subdominant and go down to the tonic, mm -hmm. and you can you, you can kind of you can kind of start like that, but then kind of break it up into something completely different, original, and it takes um, some experimentation to get something completely new that that doesn't sound too foreign or weird, but mm -hmm. still um, familiar and fresh. That uh, that it's actually pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you ever like modulate the key or switch it all together mid track? Uh, within a, a single track, you mean? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I used to do that early on, I think, but um, it's it's not really necessary to to change the key mm -hmm. to to make something interesting. I think. Um, I mean, if I do change the keys, it's it's usually to very Two relevant keys, like if I, like from 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 C major to to A minor, yeah, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm not, so you I'm keep not, the tone and material. I don't I don't really uh, keep track of what I do actually. I just um, I just do what sounds good, <laughs> and, yeah, and see that, from there. That that's that's very good actually. That I think that's better advice than it might may sound like at first because I often I I often try to sick to or i'm often limited by by certain schemes and chord progressions and like everything has to be four or eight bars long and stuff like that but th it's actually kind of cool to not really know what, what where you're going with something you just do it because it sounds cool and i think that's really liberating and and, and makes the music as interesting as it turned out to be with cross code so i think that's a good piece of advice actually i, th I think it's like um when I when I when I learned music theory, um, I would I would try to to um, see how I could use it to making music. But I learned later on uh, to, um, that that music theory is better used to analyze music than not to use it to to make music. So it's uh, making mm -hmm. music to me is more like um, you have to you, you just uh, you just trying to find out something that sounds cool, trying to to express yourself. It's 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 not uh, it's not a science. It's not mathematics or something that 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 this this chord um, has to go to this chord and stuff like that. Just you just try out stuff and um, uh, see if it's if it's uh, if it sounds good. If it sounds like your style, mm -hmm. like there, I, I would also say like um, music is more like a language you speak, and with uh, each piece you analyze. Or each um, experimentation, you find something new to you could use. You basically extend your vocabulary, and oh, totally, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the end, when you're like improvising or trying to come up with a new track, you you rely on that vocabulary to um, to make something new, mm -hmm. to to tell tell a new story, for it, so to say. If you were to uh, like compare making music uh, like uh, as to writing a book, 
Mm -hmm. So uh, that's 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 how I kind of approach uh, making music. Yeah, you put another like I would have I said it's like putting new tools in your in your toolbox. Uh, but absolutely, I understand that approach. Excellent. Yeah. Then let's let's turn to the future plans. So are you actually moving to Japan, Dennis? Um, I plan to. Like it's a uh, it's been a long dream of mine, and um, I've been I've always uh, telling myself when CrossCut is out, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm I'm gonna try to, to go go to Japan and look for clients there because mm -hmm. to me like uh, when I, when I was growing up I played lots of Japanese games and I always wanted to work on these on on, on such games and um, here in Germany I cannot find such games. <laughs> sure, I mean you you work remote anyway, so you could try to find Japanese clients from from Germany, you know? Yeah, that's true. I, I work remotely. However, um, many many people uh, like peers, um, they they find their clients through um, meetups or conventions. Oh yeah. So uh, there 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 are certainly clients you can find online, but um, you can you can find more clients when you're actually um, in an area. In a in a big big city that actually has an active um, um, game development uh, community or industry. Absolutely, yeah. That's also a good piece of advice. Uh, right now, I'm I'm living like in a um, I'm I'm living like two hours away from Cologne, and it's pretty hard to find uh, dev meetups uh, from here without having to <laughs> go go through like a long train ride. Yeah, nah, it sucks. And even then, it's not gonna be the kinds of games that you want to do. Yeah, that's that's always that's 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 most likely true. Um, so it's 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 kind of hard to find the, the right kind of games where I would certainly fit into. So um, my my best luck so far has been through um, through social media, through the internet, to find new clients. And uh, I'm I'm hoping that when I move to uh, to Japan, where um, my the, the roots of my my musical style and my tastes, uh, that yeah. I, I would find uh, an easier time uh, that that I have an easier time finding um, interested clients there. Yeah, but of, it's of course a, a big risk I would take. So um, I rather want to uh, try it now when I, while I'm young and I can risk stuff. Yeah, uh, than uh, do it when I'm when I'm too old too. Yeah, I understand well. Uh, but you guys are gonna stay on board for for future future radical fish projects, I assume. I would hope so. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> Depends on Felix. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I think I think he, he plans to uh, involve us in in, in his next next projects. Okay. Great. It's including including the the the, the backer content. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> True. But I, you mean you have to be around for that at least. And um, you always do live streams on Sundays, right? Uh, Saturday it is now, I think. Oh, on Saturdays. Yeah, it used to be Sundays. Okay. Are you guys always there? Um, sometimes I'm in the chat, but uh, in the voice chat, I'm very, very seldom. Okay. Oh, you can you can rarely find me there uh, these days. I used to be part of it, but. Um... I, I um I've I've been folk, uh, I've not been attending those anymore. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a big deal. It's a couple hours every every week. I I really don't know how you guys do it. Uh, how Felix does it? Yeah, it goes it goes up uh, like even after midnight. So <laughs> yeah, that's. I want to go to bed too. But you guys got a very active community uh, as a result, so it's it's really paying yes. off. Oh yeah, we're very fortunate to have a, have such a great community. Yes, we love our community. It's incredible. Like you, you get fan art for days, like every day. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's so positive, and everyone's so understanding of our like development choices and stuff. Yeah, and even when stuff like takes long or something, everybody's like, "Take your time. You gotta do mm. it right." And uh, I, I'm really, I'm really happy about the the way people talk to you guys. It's really cool. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, then in that case, I don't think we have any more to talk about. Thanks a lot again for for being on our podcast. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's it's been a pleasure. Thanks everybody for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, those two are really very, very interesting people to talk to. I met them in person at Gamescom, which is when 
the whole idea of doing this interview originated. That said, I don't know when another podcast is coming out as usual. Um, it's just going to be whenever there is a new opportunity. Peter, uh, my, essentially the guy in charge of Behind the Audio, and myself both got new jobs this year. So um, we didn't have uh, as much time as we uh, like, but um, I'm not saying there are going to be fewer podcasts, but I'm also saying that they're not going to be any more regular than they've been in the past. Uh, probably a couple months from now, I'll bump into somebody um, in the industry who really has some interesting things to say, and I'll record it for you guys. If you like this podcast, feel free to subscribe to us uh, on whichever platform you're listening. Um, we also have some interviews on our YouTube channel behind the audio. Um, we're calling them Tuesday Talks. We used to publish them every week on Tuesdays. And of course, we have a website behind the audio.com uh, with loads of timeless material. Even though we're not getting much out at the moment, I'm sure you'll find something interesting. See you then!